Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. If you are a fan of Bomberman, then probably one of the best Bomberman games that was probably ever made is definitely uh, Saturn Bomberman. And then this game reminded me so much of that. This is a game that came out in Japan. I think it's called Susumi Susumi Smile. And when I first tried this, the first thing I thought was Bomberman. But this is such a different game. Now... The way it works is you are some type of chicken, I guess, in a uh, egg, as you can see, eggshell. But the whole point of it is you can't really go inside this level. You're supposed to just get all these coins. And the way it works is you avoid getting touched like I just did there, okay? And what you can do is you can really get as many coins as you can and you can press a button. You can retract yourself like that, see? So it's a very simple pre premise, but it's deceptively addicting. I mean, this is a game that, like I said, just a lot like Bomberman. It's just so much fun to play. It's very addicting. And then as you get further in the game, it becomes even more and more complex. So check that out. And so when I did start playing it, my first thought was, yes, this is a Bomberman clone. But then as I started playing it more and more, it's nothing like Bomberman. It's so different. And in a good way. And as I said earlier, Japan is known for producing a lot of these puzzle games. And most of them, they're like Me Too type puzzle games. But this is one that's very unique in a good way. Because I've never played a puzzle game exactly like this before. So that's definitely a good thing. And as you get further in the levels, there's also boss battles as well, which is cool. Now, the only thing that is different here in terms of the style of gameplay there can be multiple players but it's not quite the same way as you know like a bomberman where especially Sam, uh, saturn bomberman where you could i think have like up to 10 players at a time which you know would make things go absolutely crazy but this is a game that i could come back to over and over it's one of those games that you just pick up and play you know and although it seems easy this gets really difficult later on and there i got a special right there and, you know, uh, Japanese games, they have this really weird type of humor that I think most Western audiences are not used to. A lot of times, they just don't make sense, okay? Let, let's just put it that way. <laughs> but it's just fun in, in either case. And as you can see, they add more enemies. And the enemies, they have different attributes, which does add to the difficulty level, of course. And even the way, as you can see, the level design on this, it does definitely add to the challenge because in some cases you don't go in a strictly a straight line in some cases you have to go a really long route while trying to avoid the enemies at the same time so that makes it a lot more difficult for you to get through the stage yeah as you can see here it's just a very simple but fun premise you know uh, i like the fact that the way the characters are drawn as well the very anime style very whimsical just fun, fun stuff. Ooh. I can't imagine uh, how much fun or maybe how much more hectic this game would be if they had like, you know, like 10 players like they did on Saturn Bomberman. That would probably be ridiculous. But see here, like when, when you're going out, it's kind of like a caterpillar. You can't, you can't go through yourself, okay? So that's another element that the developers added to make things more difficult, okay? More difficult. And you'll see as you get later into this game, that could become a huge problem because you're trying to get these coins and you're going through these very, uh, you know, these levels that are a lot more complex later on. Uh, you have to wind through a lot more things. And at the same time, there's a lot more enemies too. They get a lot more difficult. It's like these clouds right here. And as you can see, there was a world map. And I'm not sure if you have to go in order uh, because... In some cases, I will go through a few levels and then I fight the boss. In this case, it looks like I went to a completely different level and I haven't fought a boss yet. So it does change things up. This stage kind of reminds me of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, if you remember Sonic the Hedgehog 2, they had that whole uh, casino type level. It's very famous. So the color style is very similar, very whimsical. I really like the characters in this game. It's just really fun. There it is. 
And some of these puzzle games that come out in Japan, you know, the premise and everything else is really simple. But what the game developers get so right in their puzzle games is the challenge, okay? They get just the right amount of challenge where you want to keep playing more and more. And this is something that I don't really caught on, think caught on very well outside of Japan. Uh, because even though U.S. players do like puzzle games as well, they don't like it at the same level that uh, Japanese players do. And as you can see here, see this level got more difficult because I had to mine a lot further just to get that those coins. Okay, so I'll finish this level up. Boom. Hopefully, I'll be able to uh, battle the boss next. And when I first played this, it took a while to get used to it. I wasn't sure how things worked. Because I thought I was supposed to go to level, but that didn't happen. Let's see if I can... Oops. Oh, wow. And see, like, this one's a lot more difficult. Because I had to wind in a lot further just to get these coins. And then the enemies are faster, too. Whoa. Okay. Oh. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Now this game, I think even today, it would be a pretty fun game, especially like a party game. If they have something like this online, it'd be really cool. I could see a lot of people getting into this. Whoa, yes. <laughs> All right. Seven, seven, seven. Okay, I am still not to the boss. I'm hoping to get far enough to where you... I can show you the boss because the boss battles, they're, they're pretty cool. I mean, not anything crazy, but, you know, it really fits into the whole creative nature of this game. Oh, wow. Okay. And honestly, when I first started playing this, I died a lot. So I've had a lot more uh, practice since then. So that was my first continue. But all the other times, it's just like every time I thought I was going to pass the stage, I... I get uh, killed by one of these enemies because they move faster and then uh, the stages get a lot more convoluted. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, whoa, that was close. <laughs> I really enjoy games like this, you know, and uh, like I said, nobody does it better than Japan. They just do these types of games really well. And the whole culture there, they love these types of games. They love pachinko machines, you know. Those whole puzzle challenging elements, it's more important to them than uh, things like graphics and stuff, okay. Whereas in the U.S., uh, a lot of games are really focused on presentation. Uh, whereas, you know, a lot of Japanese games, they're more focused on uh, the challenge, you know, uh, part of it, okay. And so that's why, uh, you know, if you go to Japan... It, they're heavily mobile game based. Okay, a lot of people enjoy playing mobile games and pachinko machines more than they do, uh, you know, PC PC game like AAA titles and stuff. You know, now that is changing. Okay, and obviously the Japanese love consoles as well, but the majority of people in the whole Asian regions, uh, they're really more into mobile games. Okay, and so a game like this would be uh, perfectly suited for a mobile game. Uh, as long as they got the uh, controls right, okay? So, I don't know how well this will work in a mobile game because, you know, you do have to use your controllers quite a bit. And without good controllers, you, or a good control system, you'd probably die a lot, especially if you're trying to use a touch system to move really quick. All right. See, like that one, you know, I mean, and uh, like I said, you know, you're, you're winding through these different stages. And so it's not just like straight lines. Okay, here's the boss. And the boss fits the theme of each level as well. So there's a push. Whoa, here's a push. And see, like what I was saying, the level design, it makes it more difficult for, oh, for you to get there. Oh, man. Let me see if I can get there. So whenever you die, you come back on, you have a few moments of, oh man, of invincibility. So you take advantage of that. All right, one more. All right. <laughs> gotcha. Flatten that boss. All right. So uh, 
I think that's it for uh, this review of this game. Um, this is a definitely fun game. At first, you know, it seems like a Bomberman game, but as you play it more, it is its own game. And much like Bomberman, it is ex it's extremely fun and challenging. I, I highly recommend this game. Uh, obviously, you probably won't be able to get it <laughs> in American shelves, but uh, this was a game that came out in Japan. And so if you had any thoughts on this game or any other similar puzzle type games uh, like this, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to subscribe. And if you wanted to support my channel further, you could do that at patreon.com forward slash geek outdoors. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.